Okay, let's just get right to it. Look at this. This is the Nike Air Max 186, AKA Big Bubble. It's been the talk of the sneaker world for the past few weeks and rightly so. I mean, look at it. What is this giant air bubble unit and why is Nike even putting this out on Air Max Day? The story has a lot more to it, so let's just hop right into it. Yo, 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 hey guys, poppin'. I am Jacques Slade, and today we're taking a closer look at Nike's next drop, the Nike Air Max 186, AKA Big Bubble. The issue is something I didn't expect. Like with most things, we have a level of expectation when it comes to the product we get from Nike, and this honestly throws a wrench into that whole program. To get the full story though, we have to go back a little bit. See, way back in the 80s, Nike had this technology called Air. It was initially invented by a former aerospace engineer named Marion Franklin Rudy. And back in 1977, he induced the idea of putting air into a running shoe. This led to the creation of the Nike Air Tailwind, the first shoe to be released to the public that actually featured Nike Air technology. Fast forward a few years and we got the Air Force One and the Air Trainer and a few others that featured the air unit in the sole. However, there was one issue. No one could actually see the air inside the shoes. And as a consumer, you often don't believe it unless you can actually see it with your own eyes. I shouldn't say it was a problem. See, rumors I have heard say that most people within Nike didn't even like it when they saw that air unit the very first time. The prevailing thought was the consumers wouldn't care or that they would think that the shoe was less stable because part of the midsole was cut out. Thankfully, one designer was insistent about it, Tinker Hatfield. I'm going to assume you know about Tinker Hatfield, but if you don't, let me know in the comments down below and I'll do a whole video about him. Anyway, let's get back to the shoe. Rumor has it that Tinker was inspired by the Inside Out Museum in France, the Pompidou Center. He brought that same sort of thinking to footwear design and the iconic Air Max One was born. Now, that is where this shoe comes into play. This is the OG version of the Air Max One and it hasn't seen the light of day since it originally launched back in 1987. To get it right, Nike gave this one a bit of an upgrade when it comes to presentation. For the box, they dipped it in this university color and added a few black marks or scratches all over it. It kind of feels like the boxes we saw on the reimagined sneakers from Jordan brand. However, unlike those, this one stays true to the original and doesn't use the yellowing tactic to make them feel old. This is a new old sneaker, if that makes sense. The color is true to the original with the university red taking up the majority of the design with the white and gray finishing off the details. And speaking of details, one part of the Air Max one that has always bugged me a little bit was the use of mesh on the inlays here. This gets dirty really easily and it isn't the easiest thing in the world to clean and they use that same mesh back with this release and I imagine that I'll personally have the same issues. For the overlays, Nike is using what feels almost like felt it's the same material we've always seen on the OG colorway and really makes the university red pop. That's actually one thing about the Air Max One in this colorway, the red is going to show. And I love the way that it just pops off of this silhouette. But that brings us to the air bubble. Yeah, the centerpiece of the design, the one feature that helped separate this sneaker from all other running shoes back in 1987. And if you're going to speak to the facts, well, it was a failure it legitimately didn't work right in certain conditions. Though it gave us consumers a look into the shoe in a way that we never had before, it also couldn't hold up under cold weather conditions. Luckily for Nike, the issue was discovered during the initial release of the shoe and only about 400,000 pairs were sold with the defective air unit and the shoe was released in the spring as well. So cold weather really wasn't a part of the equation. Nike quickly redesigned the shoe and the air unit and the new OG version of the shoe was born before it had any cold weather problems. Now, unfortunately, this is where a lot of the conversation has been around this shoe. A lot of people in the culture have grown up with the smaller three pillar version of the Air Max One as the only version of the shoe that they know. So when this version started to leak, many people thought it was Nike quote, playing with the design when in fact, it was Nike taking it back to the OG. And for those that don't believe it, you can actually find old photos of the original design of the shoe floating around the internet that show the four pillar design with the larger window. Now to me, this is the way Nike should be treating the Jordan Retros, but that's probably a discussion for another video. Let's just 
stick to this update. I've had this pair for about a week now and I can tell you that these feel great. The midsole is nice and soft and the air unit does its job and keeps things bouncy. The Nike engineering team worked on the old slash new design for the last several years. And as you can imagine, the tech and the manufacturing process that may have caused the initial issues has gotten a lot better over time. It's been literal decades since the launch of the original Air Max one. And we've seen what Nike can do with air units now. Everything from the Vapor Max to the Air Max Scorpion show us how far Nike can and is willing to take the air concept originally thought of by Frank Rudy. So the design is definitely jarring. When I first pulled these out of the box, I thought it looked weird. As someone that has seen countless versions of the Air Max one, seeing this larger unit, well, it kind of throws off the proportions of the shoe, especially with the, like this view, the profile view. While the toe down look is most important for a sneakerhead, the profile is a very close second. Think about it. How do you see shoes on a wall at a store? In the profile view. This is how we often first fall in love with the silhouette. With this pair, if you're familiar with the Air Max one, you feel like something is off. And it is to be fair. But after living with them for a few days, that shock and awe, it kind of starts to wear off and you start to get a better vision for what Tinker saw when he originally designed this shoe. A look into how the ride and the comfort of a shoe with air worked. The more I thought about it, the more I actually started to like it. And that was up until I realized that shortly after the Air Max 1 came out, the Air Jordan 3 came out. The shoe that probably should be credited with being the most important sneaker in the Jordan lineup because without it, MJ may have never stayed with the brand. If I check the back of that sneaker, you'll notice a familiar slim three slot air unit. If the original big bubble would have worked here, would that be the same bubble they would have used on the Air Jordan 3? See now that, that would probably cause some controversy. Look at it this way. This is a bit of sneaker history that you're going to get to wear. They even included the size on the side, something that they don't even do anymore. A once forgotten piece of the story of Nike Air Max line that could have stayed in Tinker's notebook and in the Nike archives is now living and breathing. We get to see that story told and really the failure that comes along with it. You don't often get that type of storytelling from brands. Rarely do they say, hey, you know what? We put this out and it was bad, so we fixed it. That is essentially what Nike is doing with this Air Max. And I personally find it a nice change from the way we hear about sneakers these days. It's not just hype, it's actually rooted in history. Like even the waffle pattern here on the bottom is the same. That's story and that's history we're walking in. All right, for anyone looking to grab a pair of these, you can pick them up starting on March 26 for $150. I would honestly really love to know what you guys think about this pair now that you've seen them so often. Does the big bobble, big bobble, big bubble, still bother you? Let me know. All right, guys. Peace.